Hi everybody, this is Gad Saad for The Sad Truth. I thought that today I would take a few minutes and discuss the scientific peer review process. Uh, many non-academics might have heard the term, but you may not necessarily know the, the actual detailed mechanics of the process, and so I thought that I would uh, spend a few minutes describing it. And so the process starts as follows. As an academic, you come up with an idea uh, worthy of further exploration. You set out to test your idea, you collect, you, you design the research instrument, you collect the data, you analyze the data, you write up the paper, and then at that point is where the review process starts. You might have already spent a year, two, three years doing the research, and then the review process starts when you actually submit the paper uh, to the journal of your choice. And so the first decision you have to make is which journal is appropriate for your paper. And there are different ways that you could tackle that decision. Uh, once you submit the paper to the editorial uh, office, uh, the editor might decide to desk reject the paper. This this happens when either the paper doesn't really fit, the, the, the content of the paper doesn't really fit with uh, the mission of the journal or the scope of the journal, or because upon a, a perusal of your paper, uh, the editor decides that it doesn't pass uh, the quality level that is expected of that journal, and so the, the, you know he or she desk rejects it. In other words, it doesn't even go through the review process. Assuming that you clear that first step, that the editor then has to decide uh, to which reviewers the paper should be sent. Typically, the reviewers are chosen from a journal's editorial board, but sometimes the topic of your paper uh, might contain. Uh, it, you know, might consist of an area of, of expertise or might require an area of expertise that none of the editorial board members necessarily have, in which case the editor will look for an ad hoc reviewer. So a reviewer who is not on the editorial board who can hopefully offer uh, you know, a good uh, an expert read of your paper. Uh, and sometimes you might also have an associate editor who is also involved in the process. And so this the, your paper goes out, it takes a month or two hopefully, and then the reviews come back, the editor takes all of these uh, pieces of information and then uh, drafts a editorial decision letter uh, with his or her position along with all of the uh, reviewer comments that were provided by each of the different parties who read and reviewed your, your paper. And so at this point uh, the editor can reject your paper or you can go through what is called the r and &R process, right? Revise and resubmit. Those could typically be minor revisions, which happens later in the review process, or they could be major revisions. Uh, revisions could be things like, uh, you know, have you thought about controlling for this variable? Uh, what about ruling out this alternative, uh, alternate explanation? Uh, so they could be methodological issues, they could be uh, data analytic issues, they could be epistemological or theoretical issues. Uh, all possibilities uh, exist and then basically what happens assuming that you've gotten a revise and resubmit you you take all of that information in hopefully you stay calm and collected oftentimes when as academics we spent years working on a paper your first response is to you know be upset of course and frustrated that look I have all this additional work that I have to handle but uh, very often the reviewers are quite right are quite wonderful in how judicious they are in looking over your work, not always, but many times, in which case taking a step back, letting it sink in, and then coming back to your um, your paper and, and their comments on your paper is a good idea because it allows you to sort of reread their comments uh, in a new spirit. Uh, and then you start implementing their changes. Sometimes you don't agree with those changes, in which case you can politely state why you think that you won't be implementing you know, suggestion X, and others you will implement. And so what you do is you basically go through, you know, piecemeal, item by item, all of the things that are that have been requested of you. You implement those that you want. You don't the ones that you think you don't have to. And then you craft a reply letter to the editor, uh, which will be circulated also to all of the reviewers, uh, where you basically submit the revised paper and, and your response to all of the requirements. And that process goes th typically through multiple rounds. So your paper could be in round one, round two, round three. And so it could be quite an elaborate and, and punishing process 
hopefully in most instances the paper that you've ended up with ends up being stronger than the one that you started with uh, and so that's the process it takes years and frankly at the end of it uh, none of us get richer I mean there are some schools that offer bonuses uh, when you publish papers and especially when you publish papers in, in certain journals that are prestigious but most of us do what we do uh, with no additional remuneration it's part of our job and really we do it only for the love of hopefully discovering something new and exciting, sharing it with others, and for the joy of hopefully having people read your work and then using it in some uh, constructive way in their own work, right? That's why we get excited when our colleagues cite our papers, because this means that hopefully we had something that was uh, worthy of someone else uh, being influenced by it. So there you have it. That's the peer review process. It's quite brutal, just to give you a sense many journals have rejection rates in the order of 90% plus. And, and, I, and I've known several very, very uh, esteemed uh, scientists who, who have told me privately that, they've, that many of their papers get rejected uh, you know, in the first round. And so there you have it. Uh, no one is outside the purview of the punishing corrective process of the peer review process, but as I said, uh, it has its faults, but it's the best system that we currently have to ensure that the work that we put out there uh, has been vetted. So there you go, folks. Please share this uh, clip. And as I mentioned in my last uh, video, the 200th show, please, if you can contribute through Patreon or through PayPal, that would be much appreciated. Talk to you soon, ciao.